Alhamdulillah, last lecture we were discussing the khutbah of Imam al Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala and then we initiated our discussion uh, into the muqaddimah, the introduction of Imam al Nawawi. You mentioned the first verse and the commentary on the first verse. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I have not created the jinn kind and the human kind إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Except that they worship me. مَا أُرِيدُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ رِزْقٍ وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ يُطْعِمُونَ And I do not want from them sustenance and I do not want that they feed me. Uh, these are the two verses that we spoke of uh, last session. Those of the brothers and sisters who have the copy that the masjid has provided, this is on page 30. On page 30, in the middle, I create the translation of the book is I created jinn and man solely for my worship. That's where we reached last uh, session. For today's lesson, you can follow the introduction. The introduction in the book is just a translation. But once we actually start the text, you'll have both the Arabic to look at and read and the translation from the book and then the commentary which I will deliver for that you'll need your own um, pens and writing pads inshallah so if you want you can follow the book I'll be reading the Arabic in certain parts and translating and explaining and if you want you can follow with the book as well or if you want you can just uh, leave the book and pay attention for the introduction today Imam Nawawi started with this verse that we that I have not created jinn kind and mankind except that they worship me. After mentioning this, he alayhi rahma says, Hada tasrihum bi annahum khuliqu lil ibadah. This is tasrih. This verse is tasrih. It's a clear indication that they have been khuliqu, they have been created lil ibadah for worship. This is a clear indication that the humans, humankind, jinn kind, men, women, have been created lil ibadah. This verse is telling us that's the purpose of our life. Uh, how beautifully Maulana Jalaluddin al Rumi, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his Masnavi speaks about this, where he says in the latter part, he says, Zindagi Ahmad Barahe Bandagi. That zindagi, life, comes into existence with servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Life comes into existence because we are servants of Allah. That's life. Our service to Allah is our life. Zindagi, bebandagi, sharmindagi. These are words used in the Urdu language as well. Zindagi, life. Bebandagi. Without serving Allah, sharmindagi is a pure humiliation. That's the purpose of our life. فَحَقَّ عَلَيْهِمُ الْإِعْتِنَاءُ بِمَا خُلِقُوا لَهُ فَحَقَّ عَلَيْهِمْ Therefore, it is incumbent upon the humans. It is necessary upon the humans. What is? Two things, he mentions two things are necessary upon the humans. If they want to fulfill the purpose of their life, they need to do two things. Number one, They need to prepare for that which they were created for. The first thing they need to do is prepare and give their time, give their attention, لِمَا خُلِقُوا لَهُ for that which they have been created. That's the first thing that the human needs to do. And the second thing, Al-I'radu an hudud dunya Al-I'rad, to turn away an hudud dunya from the portions of the world. From the portions of the world, bizzahada, with asceticism or with leaving the dunya. So these are two things that Imam Nawawi says that us, as servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we want to fulfill the purpose of our life, these are two things we need to do. Number one, prepare for the, the purpose of our creation. And number two, turn away from delving into the hududid dunya, the portions of the world. 
One of the commentaries I'm using is Dalil al-Falihin by Muhammad ibn Allan, rahimahullah ta'ala, a scholar of Makkah al-Mukarrama, Zadahallahu sharafun wa ta'zima. In commentary of this, he mentions a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He quotes at Imam al-Ghazali and Imam al-Tirmidhi, both uh, Imam Tirmidhi narrates this and Imam Ghazali quotes this. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, We're in a dars of hadith, so this will be, it should be your second nature to recite salawat, should be your second nature. It's mentioned that Imam uh, Malik bin Anas, the great Imam Malik, when he would teach hadith, he would have a person in his gathering that would be, he would be paying him to sit in the gathering and whenever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioned for him to recite salawat loudly to remind everybody else to recite salawat. So he would pay him, that's his job, that's your job. You come and sit in the gathering, whenever you hear the beloved's name, recite salawat, durood sharif loudly so all other people, attendees remember to recite salawat. So. If, if we mention the name of the Beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then recite Salawat and don't um, shy away from reading loudly because this will encourage others and you'll get the reward of the others reciting Durood Sharif Salawat as well. Qala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam La haqqa libni Adam illa fi thalatha The child of Adam does not have a right except in three things. These are from dunya. So we, the child of Adam, we are the children of Adam, Banu Adam. That's why we call Adami, Adam from Adam. The child of Adam in dunya has no right except for three things. So we have the right of three things in dunya. Number one, ta'amun yuqimu bihi sulbuhu. Number two, thawbun yuwari bihi awratuh. Number three, Baytun Yakinuhu Fama Zada Fahua Hisab. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the child of Adam in Dunya does not have any right in the portions of Dunya except for in three things. Number one, Ta'amun Yukimu Bihi Salbuhu. Food. So much so that he is able to stay healthy. The meaning of this. Enough food that he stays healthy. That's our right as humans to eat enough food that keeps us alive and keeps us healthy. Number two, thobun yuwari bihi awratu. Clothes, so much so that we can cover ourselves. So we as a children of Adam have a right of over clothing in this dunya. But how much clothing? So much that we can live our life and cover ourselves. In the winter, we have enough clothes to protect us from the cold. And in the summer, we have enough clothes to cover ourselves and even protect us from the heat as well. And number three, the third right that we have, Baytun Yakinuhu, a house that will shelter him. A house or a place that will shelter him. These are three rights of the child of Adam. In dunya, we have a right to food, but enough food so that we can live our life and be healthy. That's uh, number two, clothing. We have a right over clothing, so much so, or so much that we can protect ourselves and live our life. And number three, shelter, a home, a place to live that will protect us and keep us hidden from the outside world. The Prophet said, فَمَا زَادَ فَهُوَ حِسَابٌ What is more than this, a person will be accounted for. So you have food. Do you have enough to live your life, to look after your family, your wife, your children? Do you have enough? Alhamdulillah. Yes, but you know what, I'm going to get some more. Order three, four more pizzas. Order some more burger meals. Do you, if you have enough food for yourself, then this is something meaning to suffice yourself, to suffice your family, to suffice your children. Ma zad fahuwa hisab. 
What is more than this you'll be questioned for. It doesn't mean it's bad, bear that in mind. You'll be questioned for why did you want some more? If you have a valid answer, I was preparing for guests, that's why. In the commentary of Surah Ma'un, uh, Imam al Baydawi rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam al Sawi rahimahullah ta'ala mentions that when you go shopping, when you go shopping, you should actually buy more of things that you think your neighbor might need. You, mu you should buy more of things that you think your neighbor might, me might need. For example, your neighbor has children. So you're going to shop for yourself. You see some crisps, some sweets, some chocolates. You buy some for your children, but you realize, look, my neighbor has some children as well. And sometimes I see them, sometimes they come to my house. I'll buy some more. That's more than your need. But what is your intention? This is for my neighbor. So if it's more than your need, then what's your intention behind this? Number two, clothes. You have a right over clothes, but clothes so much so that you can live your life, you can protect yourself. Not that you have bought 300 pound shoes for one wedding, another wedding's coming. No, no, the same brotherly people are going to be there, they're going to see my same shoes. Let me spend 200 pounds more on buying different shoes. So we have to be realistic about this. How much do our clothes cost and how much how many pairs do we need how many pairs do we need and of course you you can have, you have clothes for the winter different pairs of clothes different styles of clothes that's perfectly fine as long as you you're justified in buying them if you have a watch that's worth 300 pounds but it's not it's not satisfying you then you see somebody else's watch 600 pound watch think I'm gonna buy that watch why it's gonna tell the same time it's not gonna fast forward time time is time so we need to be realistic about our life this is in itself a huge lesson about what we now call consumer lifestyle this is a huge lesson about what we now call consumer lifestyle how we live our life when I'm earning where's my target how much do I want to earn? How much do I need? Where's the necessity and where's the embellishments? So this is very, very important. If you're working to earn your necessity, you are in ibadah. You are in servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you are going beyond your necessity for embellishments, and then due to this, you are forsaking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then surely, there will be accountability over these things. So this is one simple statement of Imam al-Nawawi, but you can see the depth of this statement. Then he, why? Why is he saying this? Why do we, to fulfill our servitude to Allah, he's saying, turn away from dunya. If you want to fulfill your servitude to Allah, being a servant to Allah, if you want to become Abdullah, if you want to become Amatullah, he's saying turn away from dunya. Why? فَإِنَّهَا دَارُ نَفَادٍ Because dunya is دَارُ نَفَادٍ It's a perishing world. It's a perishing abode. دَارُ نَفَادٍ It's a perishing abode. لَا مَحَلُّ إِخْلَادٍ It's not the eternal abode. It's not the eternal place. So turn away from this. This is nafad. It's perishing. It's not ikhlad. It's not for eternity. This dunya is markabu uburin. It's the crossing point. It's the crossing point. La manzilu huburin. It's not the place of joy. It's not the place of joy. You know when you're traveling on the motorway, you're a bit tired, you stop at the service station. That's dunya, your service station. Imagine stopping at the service station and thinking, you know what, let's just stay here. <laughs> Forget our destination. We're staying here at the service station. Everything will be from here. No, nobody thinks like that. Why? Because they know this is markabu ubur. This is a crossing point. Somewhere you stop and then you leave. It is not manzilu hubur. This is not the place of our enjoyment. 
That's why turn away from this place, turn away from this dunya. The dunya is mashra'u infisam. It is the, you can say, the spring of separation or the place of separation. That's all this dunya is. It's a place that we will move away from. La mawtinu dawam. It is not the, the watan. It is not the homeland. You know the term watan has been used often. Watan. This is not our watan. This is not our place of dawam, of continuity. This is not where we're going to be forever, in simple terms. Imam Ibn Allan rahimahullah ta'ala speaks about uh, this, about the watan. And he says something very beautiful. There's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hubbul watani min al-eeman. I heard this hadith many times. I did not truly understand until I read this. Hubbul watani min al-eeman. The love of the homeland is from iman. To love your homeland is from your iman. It's a branch of your faith to love your homeland. Imam Ibn Adlan says, the homeland, the real homeland of the believer is no land on the face of this dunya. The real watan, the real homeland of the believer is Jannah, is paradise. So, hubbul watani min al-iman is hubbul jannati min al-iman. Loving the homeland means to love Jannah. It means to love Jannah, and loving Jannah, of course, is a sign of a person's Iman. So when we think about our homelands, where we're from, you might be from the, the uh, subcontinent, you might be from the uh, uh, African world, the Arabian world, Central Asia. These are our homelands. This is our Watan. My Watan is Kashmir. That's my Watan. I love my Watan. What's happening in Kashmir is affecting all Muslims, but affecting Kashmir is even more. What's happening in Palestine is affecting all Muslims, but affecting people of Palestine even more. Why? Because this is their homeland and they have love for it. But in reality, we have only one homeland, insha'Allah, and that is Jannah. That is paradise. After mentioning this, that you should turn away from dunya. He says, فَلِهَذَا For this reason, كَانَ الْأَيْقَاظُ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا هُمُ الْعُبَّادِ That the people who have, the, the people who are awake, the people who are awake from dunya, they are the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the ubad. So in dunya, you'll have people, the people who worship Allah are the people who are awake. Why they realized, I'm living here, but this is not my destination. This is merely the journey. So therefore they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَعْقَلُ النَّاسِ فِيهَا هُمُ الزُّهَّادِ But even greater than them, they are the people who are awake. But the people who are aqal. Nas, the most intelligent from amongst them, and not just those who worship Allah, who must zuhad. They are the people who, who are known as the zuhad, the ascetics, those people who not, don't just worship Allah, they also turn away from the dunya as well. So the people who worship Allah are awake, but then from amongst them, the people who are of supreme intelligence are not just awake. They do not just worship Allah, they also turn away from dunya also. They turn away from dunya as well. After speaking about dunya, now Imam al-Nawawi will give you an example of dunya from the Qur'an. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the dunya in the Qur'an. What is this dunya? What is this dunya that has distracted Allah's servants? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal, in surah Yunus verse 24 says, 
إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا The example of الحياه الدنيا, the worldly life, is merely like كَمَاءٍ Like water, ماء, water. The example of the worldly life is like water. أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ That we have brought down from the sky. فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ مِمَّا يَأْكُلُ النَّاسُ وَالْأَنْعَامِ Then the, you can say vegetation, nabat, the vegetation mixed with it, mixed with this water from that which the humans eat and that which the cattle eat. حَتَّى So much so, إِذَا أَخَذَتِ الْأَرْضُ زُخْرُفَهَا So much so that the earth takes its beauty. The earth takes its beauty, وَزَيَّنَتْ And it becomes beautiful. So let's step back a bit. So the water that comes down from the sky, then the water, it waters the ground. Then the seeds and the nutrients in the ground, they mix with this water. And what happens? You have crops and vegetation that grow. You have crops and vegetation that grow. Imagine a field, a farmer's field. Imagine a farmer's field in your minds. At first, it's just an empty field of soil. And then the farmer plants the seeds and the water comes down. And then the crops start to grow. وَظَنَّ أَهْلُهَا أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَيْهَا Then the people of the earth start to think that they have power over this. They have power over this. They are the ones who have brought this up. Or they are the ones who will harvest this. أَتَاهَا أَمْرُنَا لَيْلًا أَوْ نَهَارًا Then our command comes either in the night or the day. Then the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes in the night or the day. فَجَعَلْنَاهَا حَصِيدًا Then we make this field, we make these crops حَصِيدًا We harvest them or we completely remove them. كَأَلْ لَمْ تَغْنَ بِالْأَمْسِ As if they did not exist بِالْأَمْسِ yesterday. كَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And likewise, do we explain in detail the signs for the reflecting nation. Now in this verse is a beautiful example for the worldly life. Imagine a field. You have a farmer's field. The water comes, waters the ground, the seeds, the nutrients, and then from this, the crops grow. The crops grow, grow and grow until they reach their time, their peak. And then the farmer harvests the crops. After the farmer has harvested the crops, what does it look like? It looked like it looked like before. As if nothing had happened. As if nothing had happened. That's the worldly life. We come into this dunya. We are born. Our bodies are nourished and nurtured. We grow. We meet different people. We enter different parts of our life. From childhood to youthhood to adolescence to adulthood to old age. We live our life. But then what happens at the end? The end. That's what happens. As if there was no life in the first place. As if there was no life in the first place. That's the worldly life. Do you want to fail in being Allah's servant for this? For something that will perish? I was reading the commentaries of this verse of Surah to Yunus and I came across the commentary of Shaykh al-Islam al-Muslimin Sayyid Muhammad Madani Mia Hafizahullah Ta'ala from India Tafsir Ashrafi and in the commentary of this verse he, he draws out some comparisons between the world and worldly wealth compared to the um, earth. Compared to the earth. So in commentary of this, so I'll mention a couple of, uh, of uh, comparisons the Shaykh draws out from this verse. 
between the world and the worldly uh, the world and the worldly wealth and then crops and vegetation number 1 the sheikh says the way you know when the crops grow first when the grass from what the cattle eat when the grass grows first how beautiful does the grass look it's so green looks beautiful it's fresh just like plants when they grow look beautiful and fresh but then what happens to them after some time what happens to them after some time their color goes away the color goes away and they die out and become dull so when grass grows it's very beautiful it looks nice the color is nice but after a short period the color dies out the beauty dies out and itself it dies out he says likewise is worldly wealth at first it's very nice I've got my wages 400 pounds then promotion 500 pounds another promotion 600 pounds it seems really nice at first it's very beautiful at first but then after a short period that beauty dies out after a short period what you liked has died out and that's like so you can see the comparison that's been drawn out between wealth and crops that grow the way the crops they lose their beauty likewise the money which at first did give you a sense of um, security a sense of tranquility at first they did give you that happiness but that dies out eventually that's why you see so many millionaires are committing suicide so many millionaires are committing suicide because they thought imagine somebody looking at grass and thinking you know what grass I'm just gonna go grow grass it looks nice but then at the end realizes no it doesn't satisfy me it does not really make me happy that's the same thing with money the human thinks that it will make me happy, it will satisfy my desire. But after gaining it, he realizes, well, why aren't I happy? And many people who reach this level, they've, they've, they've attained their dream, and then their life becomes a dream. That's one comparison. Another comparison. He says, when it rains, on whose permission does it rain? Whose permission does it rain with? Allah's permission. Does it rain when me and you want it to rain? No. When it rains, it rains with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot do anything to make it rain. It's purely down to the izan and mashiyah of Allah, the permission and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, likewise, when you earn your wealth, this is not because of you, this is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you gain this wealth, do not let you, your nafs fool yourself. And for you to think that this is me, I'm the one who has brought this risk. Really, are you the one who placed that seed in that field across the world? And then from that seed was made flower. And then from that, fl that flower then somehow came into this country then that flower came to the shop then it came to your house then it was mixed with water then it was placed on top of heat and then it was placed in front of you was that you who done this or was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the second comparison he draws the way it does not rain when you want it to likewise you will not gain any wealth except that Allah has willed for you to gain that wealth another comparison rain is very beautiful rain is very beautiful but it's beautiful when it flows rain is beautiful when it flows when the rain flows it's beautiful it's pure you can do wudu with this everything about it is very nice but when that rain settles and become stagnant water and remains in one place so he says just like that money worldly wealth is good when it flows like water 
when it flows you've got the wealth then you pass it on you spend it you give it you don't keep it but if you hoard this worldly wealth just like water which was very beautiful when it came down but when it stayed in one place it became smelly it did not look nice and you did not even want to touch it likewise is wealth when it comes and you start hoarding wealth you do not pass it back and forward place it into a business a halal business give it into charity give it into zakat buy produce with it it's good but when you start hoarding the wealth and start amassing the wealth it will be like the stagnant smelly water <coughs> that's another comparison that he draws out a fourth comparison he draws out rain is good when it rains according to the need rain is good when it rains according to the need for us our need in this country is usually when it's really hot I wish it rains in Ramadan in the summer I wish it rains that's our need but if we were in the lands of our ancestors they know the need of rain with the field their livelihood depends on rain their food depends on rain so they know the value of rain but nevertheless you can still understand this point that rain is good when it's in a, in a certain quantity it's good for the world it's good for your crops it's good for your body it's good for the environment but then when it rains too much it becomes bad for the crops when it rains too much it becomes very dangerous for your health when it rains too much it is no good likewise is wealth when you have wealth that you need and it's according to your daruriyat or zaruriyat according to your requirements then it is good but if this wealth is far beyond what you need far beyond what you need then this will harm you immensely you think about this realistically how much money do I need what are my bills where is my money going how much is the expenditure X is what I need monthly but what I'm earning is 3x 4x four times what I need three times what I need <coughs> then it's possible that this will be like the heavy rain which is no good for the earth for the humans so again we come back to the concept of consumer lifestyle that we should reflect on our need our necessities and then embellishments we are allowed embellishments but not so much so that we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last um, uh, uh, comparison that's drawn with rain when it rains on a fruitful tree what happens Fru the fruit the fruit grow if there was a tree apple tree and there's no rain you'll have no fruits you'll have no apples so when it rains on an apple tree you get apples but when it rains on a cactus what do you get you get more and more uh, what you call splinters or thorns more and more thorns the Shaykh gives this example and he says the wealth is like this when a righteous person receives wealth then he will spend it in the correct places and his goodness would become known when a person who has an ill heart starts receiving money his illnesses start to grow his ill heart he's getting money he's bought a car but his neighbors bought a better car so what happens jealousy starts to grow or his purpose or his um, target changes I don't just need a car I need a car that's better than that one I don't just need a house I need a house that's better than that one and the, I don't want child, just children our children are better than those children so this is when an ill person receives money his illnesses become apparent just like the cactus or the the plant with thorns when it receives water the thorns grow but a, a person who has good spirituality 
He was a righteous person at heart. When he receives money, he'll be like the tree that receives water and then brings forth, brings forth fruit. To wrap up what Imam Nawawi has done, he's mentioned the purpose of our life, which is servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ubudiyah, servitude to, to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he mentions as a hurdle for us to fulfill the purpose of our life, there is a hurdle. What's that hurdle? Dunya. Dunya is the hurdle which will stop us from fulfilling the purpose of our life. Then he's given us some examples of dunya. Dunya is the abode, the perishing abode. It's a crossing point. It's the spring of separation. So he's given us some examples of what is dunya. Then he mentions a verse of the Quran. Then he mentions a verse of the Quran to depict what is dunya. And then he mentions a, a beautiful line of poetry. Inna lillahi ibadan futana, talaqu dunya wa khaful fitana. Certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has intelligent servants. Talaqu dunya, they divorce the world wa khaful fitana, and they fear the trials of the world. نَظَرُوا فِيهَا فَلَمَّا عَلِمُوا أَنَّهَا لَيْسَتْ لِحَيٍّ وَطَنًا نَظَرُوا فِيهَا They looked towards dunya فَلَمَّا عَلِمُوا And when they realized أَنَّهَا لَيْسَتْ لِحَيٍّ وَطَنًا That this dunya is not a homeland for the living person. When they realize this, what do they do? جَعَلُوهَا لُجَّةً they make this dunya a deep ocean. They make this dunya a deep ocean. A deep ocean is an ocean. If you want to cross, you need a ship. You need a boat. So when the intelligent people look towards dunya, they see an ocean. And now they need a boat. Then they take righteous actions as their ships and boats to cross this ocean. When the servants of Allah look at dunya, they realize this dunya is not for me. <laughs> this dunya is an ocean and I need to get to the other side. How can I get to the other side? I need a ship. I need a boat. Where is my boat? Where is my ship? My good actions are my boat. My good actions are my ship. Amen. To conclude, He's saying, Imam al nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala is saying now, to fulfill the purpose of our life, to become servants of Allah, we need to turn away from dunya. And to truly learn how to turn away from dunya, we need to turn to Sayyidul Anbiya wal Mursaleen, the leader of the Prophets and Messengers, Khayrul Awwaleen wal Akhireen, the best of the first and the last. سيدنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. So that's why he's written this book for us to, from the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, to implement this and via implementing the hadith turn away from dunya and truly become servants of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Imam al Nawawi رحمه الله تعالى he mentions four important points that we need to bear in mind regarding his book Riyadh al-Salihin. Number one, he has only mentioned a hadith sahiha, only authentic hadith in his book Riyadh al-Salihin. It's permissible to use weak hadith, he mentions in his own Arba'een, that it's permissible to use weak hadith for fada'il, for manaqib, for tarikh, that's permissible. But the first point, in Riyadh al-Salihin is only mentioned Sahih Hadith, authentic Hadith. <coughs> Number two, in the introduction of chapters, he starts off with verses of the Quran. So if you have turned over to the first chapter, you'll see he's introduced the chapter 
with verses of the Quran and that's what he does throughout his book. <coughs> Number three, where there is a word that has slight obscure meaning, a difficult meaning, he'll comment himself on the meaning. Often scholars of hadith will just give the hadith and leave it. But Imam al nawawi himself, where there's an obscure word or meaning, he himself will elaborate on that. And the fourth point he mentions is at the end of a hadith, if he mentions the word muttafaqun alayh, so he'll mention this, you'll be reading a hadith and he'll mention muttafaqun alayh. If he mentions this word after hadith, it means both Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim have cited it in both of their books. So if after hadith he says, this hadith is muttafaqun alayh, it means Imam Bukhari in Sahih Bukhari, al Jami al Musnad al Sahih, and Imam Muslim in his respected, uh, respective Sahih Muslim has mentioned it as well. So it's not just an ordinary hadith, it's a hadith of the highest ranking Sihha authenticity that he will mention. To conclude, Imam al Nawawi says that if this book is complete, I hope that this book takes the reader towards goodness and becomes a barrier from evil. And I'm going to mention this in Arabic. Imam Nawawi says, Ana sa'ilun akhan in bi shay'in minhu. And I ask my brother or sister who benefits from this book, even the smallest amount. I ask my brother or sister who benefits from this book, an yad'u ali that he or she does dua for me. And for my parents, and for my teachers, and all of my family and friends, and for all of the believers. And upon Allah is my trust. And unto Allah. I have handed over all of my affairs and my reliance. وَحَسْبِي اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ And Allah is sufficient for me. وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلِ وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ And there is no power to do good and no ability to save oneself from evil إِلَّا except بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ By Allah, the Great, the Most Wise. So, we'll inshallah do dua now for Imam al Nawawi because we have already benefited from his book so much. Imagine how much more we will benefit. <laughs>